This is how our piece looks after we have finished the tooling. Now we will finish the edges. We will start by taking an edge beveler. This is a number two, which is a good size for six to seven ounce leather. And we will bevel all the way around, both the front and the back. Next, we will take a sponge, a damp sponge, and we'll dampen the edge. We'll do this all the way around. We'll wait a few seconds for it to soak in, and then we'll use the, the round edge slicker and we'll slick this edge. We'll slick it until it gets nice and smooth. Now that our tooling is complete and it's dry, we can now begin the coloring and finishing process. I'm going to start by using some of the professional water stain in the light brown color and because I'm going to be adding brass hardware around the edge, I'm going to dye this with the light brown. And I will just now very carefully with a small dauber I will apply the dye up to the border. Now if you're concerned about accidentally getting over onto the scales, you may want to use a brush to do this, but I find that I can do it very well with a small dauber. So we will do this all the way around. We may need to do several coats. But we'll do one coat, wait for it to dry, and then we'll decide whether we want to do the second coat or not. After I have colored all the way around the border, I will take my dauber and dye the edge as well. The next step will be to color the scales. I'm going to use uh, two colors of the EcoFlow leather dye. I'm going to mix some of the yellow and some of the green to uh, simulate the color of the scales. I've used about uh, two-thirds yellow and one-third green, and we will now brush this on very carefully. And I will cover the entire piece, as you can see. Now this is a water-based dye. You're going to find that it will dry quite a bit lighter than what it looks right now. So I will cover the entire piece with this color of dye. After I have allowed the dye to dry thoroughly on this piece, I'm going to give it an application of the EcoFlow Super Sheen, uh, which is a clear finish. And I'll be using this actually as a resist. 
I will give it two applications of this, letting it dry completely between the two applications, and then we will give it a final finish of a an antique style finish called highlighter. After we have allowed all of our dye to dry thoroughly and the uh, finish we put on there, we'll now use the Briar Brown Highlight Stain and with a damp sponge or a piece of sheep wool's remnant, we'll wipe it on. As you can see now, I want to be very liberal with this so that it gets down in all of the cuts and stamping impressions. And after we have completely covered it with the highlight, we'll take a pad made out of paper towel and we'll wipe. And as you can see, we now have a much better looking pattern because the highlight does exactly what it says. It highlights all of the tooling that we've done on here. Now we'll let this dry and we'll be ready for assembly. I would now like to add some decoration to our piece by putting some rivets into the holes that we punched and uh, it's real easy to do that. We just bring the post through the hole, set the cap on top and with the rivet setter drive it down on a hard surface like this marble I'm using here now. And we'll do this all around the bottom and the top. Next, I would like to attach eyelets on these larger holes where we will be lacing the piece together. I'll put an eyelet in, as you can see. I will turn it over, set it in the anvil, and then with the driver, we will crimp it into place. Do another one, turn it over, bring it up through the hole, use the driver, and crimp it into place. And we do that on both sides. Next we will attach the uh, durable snaps, and I'll start first by pushing the, the cap through the holes that we punched in there. Then I'll turn it over, put the cap in the anvil, put the receiver over the eyelet part of the cap, and with the driver, I will tap it slowly and rotate the tool until it gets to where I cannot turn it. Now we will do the same thing to the other one. Next we will set the male half of the snap. I'll start by bringing the eyelet up through from the inside out. Now this is important to get this going in the right direction because uh, when you snap it, you need it to be going in the right direction. And we'll do this the same way we did with the cap. We will uh, place the tool over the eyelet, 
rotate it as we hit it until it gets tight. Now you can see we're in the proper configuration to snap these together. The final step is to lace the two sides together through the eyelet holes. Here we are using the 532nd inch Kodiak lace with a cross stitch. For this chore, you can use any stitch you would like. Lace it all the way down to the end, as you can see us doing here. And this is how our piece looks after we have laced all the way up from the bottom to the top. And that completes our gauntlets, sometimes called bracers as well.